Frank. Look at all these weeds. This place is terrible. I know, right? I know. I've let it get out of control. This is all just supposed to be gravel, right? <sighs> now it's gonna be a lot of work. And I can't put like Roundup down or something just to kill them all, because these guys obviously, right? So I'm curious, the question of the day or the question of the morning to you is, is there a way to just kill weeds in places where you don't want it? That's safe for pets? I mean, the safest thing I could do probably is just pull them all. But I, like I said, like putting Roundup or chemicals down wouldn't work because our dogs would probably get sick. I have to be very careful even with our lawn. Like I haven't fertilized our lawn at all because I'd have to keep the dogs off it for 24 hours at least or so. Or it makes things a little more difficult, but that's okay. It's part of having dogs and we love having dogs. It's just how do I get rid of all those? And do is my only option pulling them? Dad, you're just gonna have to be. You're just gonna have to work and, and pull them. You can't be lazy, man. You're just trying to be lazy. So how do I get rid of the weeds? I'm a lazy man. Yeah, you're right, Diesel. You are. You're right. I'll just pull them. A little bit of work, but that's okay. Diesel, you hungry? Let's go inside. I have to see when I can get around to it. This is the most popular show in our house. And it's mesmerizing. I can sit here and stare at this all day. It's for him. But I think they make it for me, too. <laughs> it's Hay Bear. You can find him on YouTube. <laughs> Little guy loves it. You like the Hay Bear? That's your favorite show? <laughs> So good morning, everybody. We're at home still. Uh, we're gonna be at home now until after the next weekend. Uh, it's getting towards the end of the week right now. We have a long weekend coming up here in uh, Canada, August long, it's the civic holiday. And uh, my truck's not quite gonna be ready to hit the road yet before the weekend, so we're gonna be home until after the long weekend now, which kind of works out because our camper is out on a rental right now and it comes back on the Monday. It's rented for the long weekend. And this is our first time that we've had uh, people book with us and take it out and bring it back. And there's a special like checkout inspection list that we have to go over and check in when they bring it back. And this way Britt and I can sort of both be there to go over it together. So that we both understand how the business works and how things happen. And it's our, our first, it's our first time. So we can do this together and then next time I'll probably be on the road a lot of the time if people come pick it up. And then Britt will know how to how to go through it all, and then if she calls me, I'll know what's going on too, right? So it works out. It works out. I guess it's an unscheduled vacation again. I guess it's in summertime. I'm gonna enjoy the good weather a little bit, watch some hay bear. I'm having, I'm even having a blast here. Look at him, look at him go. I don't want to get a copyright strike, so I have to keep talking, but trust me, the music is catchy. <laughs> Britt is at the vet right now. Uh, well, first, one sec. First, she brought Chevy to daycare. He's at daycare for the day, playing with his friends, getting his energy out, getting some socialization. And uh, right next door to the vet, or to the daycare, is the vet. And that's where Britt is right now with Wiener, our little dashing, our little Wiener dog. He's 13 years old. And I think it's starting to show a little bit. He's okay. He's okay. Britt is there at the vet. They're getting some blood tests done uh, to figure out uh, what's going on. He already has an enlarged heart. I'm sure they're going to check on that too. Uh, his, I know they're checking his thyroid and a couple of other things. Um, she's been very worried about him. So today's the day when he went in to see the doctor to get all that blood work done. So I hope that it comes back and that there's good news. It's just me and Theo and the boys. The dogs, the rest of the dogs at home, we're watching some hay bear, having some hay. we're just waiting for them to come home. <laughs> and of course my work never really ends, I'm, uh, I got my workstation set up over there so I can keep an eye on him here and we don't let him watch TV all day, don't worry. This is, he's only been watching for a little bit here. It's just while I'm here at home, it keeps him occupied, 
gives me something to do while I get a few videos done and a few other things done. Got babysitter Diesel over here, keeping a very close eye on him. <sighs> Just working on the video you've probably watched already. Yeah. And right from here we got... There he is. Hey! 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 Are you hiding back there? Hi. <laughs> Almost evening already. It's five o'clock. Chevy's been at daycare all day, so I'm going to pick him up right now. Britt and I have a double date, a movie double date, or a double date movie date. We're going to see Sound of Freedom in town here with uh, a couple of our friends. Man, there's traffic out today. Today's a Friday when I'm filming this, and it's the opening night of Sound of Freedom here in our local cinema. So it's going to be packed. We've heard a lot of good things about this, and this whole town is all revved up about the movie. We're going to get there super, super early and wait in line for like two hours. Hopefully that's early enough. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of other people doing the same thing. And I I hear from people who watched it already that, uh, you know, it can be hard to watch. Very emotional. Uh, it has a lot to do with child trafficking. And I don't think any of us really realize how big of uh, an industry this really is. I keep saying in my videos, like I've said it before, that I don't warn other drivers or other people on the highway when there's police presence. I don't flash my lights at oncoming traffic to be like, hey, watch out, better slow down, there's a cop around the corner. Because in my mind, I don't know who that person is. They might have just abducted a child, and they might be speeding away. They might have just committed a crime, murdered someone, who knows who they are. They might be drunk. And you know, they're just speeding, just a little bit. You know, they're a little anxious, they're speeding just a little bit, they know they're doing something wrong. They go around the corner, woo, cop pulls them over, child gets saved, or a drunk driver gets taken off the road, or a murderer gets caught, right? So I never warn people that I don't know that there's that there's police present. That That's why. And I always mention this before this movie was even made. And a lot of people came at me for that. They're like, oh, why wouldn't you warn them? I warn everybody. And they're like, proud of it. But I'll warn all other truckers. Like, yeah, I'm a trucker too, and definitely I understand the brotherhood of us and sister, brother and sisterhood, the family of us truckers on the road, we want to look out for each other. But how many times do you hear it hit the news where there's been a trucker who's been pulled over randomly, and they found out that they have a trailer full of people, human smugglers, they're driving truck. It's absolutely horrifying, the things that happen right under our nose, in our own country, that we don't even know about. Freaky when you think about it, right? So that's what this movie's about, from what I hear. I'll give you my review without spoiling it later, don't worry. I won't, I won't spoil it for you if you wanna go see it yourself. But I'll let you know how it is. From what I've heard, it's, uh, it's a great movie. So our golden boy, Chevy, went to daycare this morning, Britt brought him. And uh, little Theo, he's gonna be going to Oma and Opa's house. Uh, while we go to the movie. So he's going to be staying there for a couple of hours. Britt's at home right now getting him ready. Ooh, motorcycles down the gravel roads. That's life in Manitoba, man. <laughs> life in Manitoba. Well, and of course you get someone like right up your rear end at the same, <laughs> same time. <laughs> you want to go faster, bud? All right, you can rip it that way now, bud. I'm out of your way. Hey, you can give her. Riding my rear end all the way down the gravel road. Not my fault if I'm throwing rocks at you because you're right behind me. Anyway. I'm on the way, Chevy! Hope you had a good day. He's always so happy when we pick him up. Got to play with his friends all day. He's our youngest pup. All the rest are seniors. And uh, they don't have much energy to begin with. Chevy, he's still a young pup. He's six years old, so he needs to get his energy out and play with his friends every now and then. So we bring him here as often as we can. Hey, Chev. Well, how was it? How was it, man? You have fun? You came out of there pretty squirrely. <laughs> Just 
ball of energy. Oh, worked right out. <laughs> okay, let's go home. You're gonna stay at home. Theo's gonna go to home and Opa's. We're gonna go to the cinema. Watch a movie. The traffic is just nuts in Steinbach this weekend because it's Pioneer Days. We're celebrating the pioneers who came across the world to settle and build a new town and found a new region in Manitoba here. Found at Steinbach, you know, Gronthal, Kleefeld, Mitchell. And on the other side, Nyonzi, we got Winkler, Morton. There's a Blumenort on this side and that side. This whole region, it used to be actually uh, Mennonite Reserves is what they called it. There's the East Reserve on this side, this was the first one. And later on, we had the West Reserve. It was reserved for their exclusive use, which was later changed. A little ways down down road but uh, today and this weekend in our town here we're celebrating our history and our ancestors coming here and pioneering a new town a new city from the ground up Chevy did you tell them all about your day you tell them all about your day I know why I'm never going to take care of me you can stay here with us. You can get all your energy out right here. And you don't always play well with others. That's why. I am very nice. I am super nice. Look at me. Well, you're nice looking, but sometimes, sometimes you get a little intolerant of the obnoxious dogs, and I don't blame you. You, you tell them who's boss. Okay? <laughs> Just gotta improve on that a little bit first, eh? Diesel's a little bit, uh, well, he would never hurt another dog, but he's just, he gets annoyed with the noisy ones. And he's so old now already, I'm kind of scared of him getting hurt. And it's nice having him around here. Chevy, on the other hand, is super friendly. He doesn't like it when strangers approach us. So he does protect his family, but uh, with other dogs, he's, he's very well. He's, he does very well. Just gonna sit in your buzzy boo. He's my buzzy boo. Can't forget his little bouncy chair. He'll need that at Omanopus. Oh, I didn't think this one through. Oh, uh, open the gate. There we go. Oh. Mandatory Instagram picture? Of course. Okay. Facebook? He's, really, he's not in the posing mood right now, though. That's okay. Maybe later, right? Maybe later. Oma and Opa will get lots of good pictures of you. Oh. Opa? Yeah, they're gonna... The man yeah, himself? The man better. himself, yeah. The man, the myth, the, the legend? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not quite a legend, but... Yeah. <laughs> hey, Theo. Oh, look at your rosy Ooh. cheeks. That's the important fella. <laughs> Who's that, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna Who have fun. That? Oh yeah. Always has fun with it. Yeah. Okay, I love you. Be good. <laughs> well, this is our local movie theater. I'm gonna go wait in line. We're an hour and a half early and there's already a lineup in there. It's gonna be good. I forgot my wallet in the car. And it's Steinbeck, but I still don't want to leave my wallet in the car. We actually stopped at KFC on the way so that we wouldn't be starving waiting in line. <laughs> We're getting a new community center here too. It's a, I think a 3,000 seat arena or 2,000, 3,000 I think. Start of construction over there. So I wanted to Give it a full day to sink in that movie and give you my thoughts on it without spoiling it because if you haven't seen it I really think you should I'm aware of the strange controversies around it so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna address those uh, I don't I don't think that that should take away from the message that they were sharing in the movie. And the one thing I can say to you 
after watching it is hug your children tight. Keep them close. And we can't live in fear. But the overall message of the movie is that God's children are not for sale. It was a heavy movie to watch based on a true story. And uh, it's, it's mind-blowing knowing that this sick world coexists inside our own where children are abducted and sold into forced labor and for the sake of YouTube I'm not going to use other words that's gonna, that's gonna flag my video where these children are forced into let's say short-term relationships with older men that they don't want to be a part of but are forced to be multiple times a day for years and it's hard to think about especially once you're a parent it changes once you're a parent but if even if you don't have kids you know the, the child trafficking trade I don't like call it a trade because it's so sick. It's about to surpass the drug trade because these drug dealers around the world, these big kingpins, they've, they've realized that they, you know, they could sell one bag of drugs once, but they could sell a child five to ten times a day for ten years over and over. And there's people out there that are twisted and sick. I want to say they need to be put behind bars, but they need something much worse than that. I don't cry during movies usually. Not often. But this one was hard to hold it back. the beginning of the movie without spoiling it like they show a few examples of kids being abducted off the street and it happens in the blink of an eye you turn around for two seconds you turn back they're gone you never see them again and this isn't something that just happens in other parts of the world this happens right here. We know of people that were affected by this in their childhood. What happened in that movie happens here. Right here too. Right underneath our noses in Canada, in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, on every single continent. This is a global thing and it's grown by over 5,000% in the last five years. So, regardless of what you think of either the actors, the studio that made it, in my mind, after watching it, all of that stuff, I don't want to address it. It was the message of the movie that spoke to me, and the whole thing is about bringing these sick people to justice and saving these kids. And everyone that gets taken off the street, every one of these perverts and these, these sick people that get taken off the streets is good, is a good thing. You know, you hear of all of these rings around the world, whether it be, you know, right in the United States with powerful elite people, in South America with, you know, with cartels and gangs, you know, in Europe with either uh, the 
the big gangs and organized crime there, or in Russia, or Australia, or Africa. Sometimes it takes a good storyteller to bring this to light to a broader audience. We were very aware of this early because, like I said, we, we know people personally that are very close to us who were affected by this in childhood. We knew this was a thing right here in our own home, in our own home province, in our own country. We already knew. Many people don't. You know, I've heard of people walking out of that movie saying, oh, it's a good thing that doesn't happen here. I'm sorry to tell you, but it sure does happen here. And more people need to know about it. We all need to become aware. But we can't live in fear at the same time. You have to be aware. But you still have to live your life. You know, it makes you kind of want to just lock everything up. Lock all the doors. Put bars in all the windows, you know. Never leave the house. That's no life to live either. So, I'm sorry to leave this vlog on a heavy note. <laughs> the video was, the movie was pretty heavy and hard, and somewhat hard to take in. But I think it was a good message. I enjoyed it, and if you want to see it, I encourage you to go see it too. I think that, uh, I think that you'll be glad you went. Just bring some uh, tissues, maybe, and uh, just be aware that it may be emotionally triggering for some, because more people that you may know might have been affected by this as well. They often won't tell people because it's a very traumatic, traumatic time in their life, very traumatic. And if they escaped that or were saved from that, I don't blame them for not wanting to talk about it with everybody. So just. It affects a lot of people that you may know. I was lucky it never affected me. I had a really great childhood. Britt had a really great childhood growing up. It didn't affect either one of us. So we were lucky. Others aren't so lucky. Thanks for watching.